Welcome to this episode, everybody. It's Caleb, and in this episode, we're going to talk about strings inside of C++. Now, let me tell you what. If you're coming from C, you are in luck because C++ strings are so much easier than strings in C, and you're probably not going to want to pull your hair out once you learn how to use C++ strings. Now, if you're coming from a different programming language or you're new to C++ and programming in general, then just follow along. It's pretty simple. C++ Builder is the IDE of choice for rapidly building C++ applications. Utilize drag and drop visual components that are responsive and allow for cross-platform deployments. When building data-driven applications, you can bind data sources to visual components to make working with data easy. Go ahead and get started with a free trial of the Architect Edition, which will give you all of the features of C++ Builder. So whether you're a beginner just getting started or want to build enterprise level applications, C++ Builder is the tool for you. I'll leave a link in the description. Here's what we're going to do. We're first going to talk about how it would look if you were to use strings in C very briefly, and then we're going to talk about how to do the same thing in C++. So to work with strings in C, you would say include standard io.h, and let me zoom in just a tad for you. Then we would make a character array. And it's actually pretty helpful to understand a little bit about how strings work behind the scenes. Even if we end up switching to C++ from C, it's still nice to know. Because a lot of this stuff is still gonna work the same way. It's just abstracted away so we don't have to worry about it. But it's always good to know a little bit more about behind the scenes. So we're basically making an array of characters and we're saying this can have 30 characters. But the thing you need to understand is that that last character is actually what's known as the null terminating character, which is represented as a backslash zero. So similar how you can have like backslash n for a new line, well you can say backslash zero as the end. So what that means is although we have an array with 30 spots, we can really only store 29 in here because we have to reserve that last one. So this is by far one of the biggest issues with strings, especially for beginners, because it's so easy to forget about that null terminating character or not even know it's there and work with strings incorrectly. So basically when we get some input, we'll use scanf, that's how you would do it in C. You basically say, hey, we want this formatted as a string. That's what we're expecting as input but you can limit the number of characters to 29 by passing in a 29 there. And where we're gonna store this is in this variable called name. Then the way you would print this in C is you would say print F and the format. So just like we did a format string for scanf, we're gonna do something similar for print F, which is going to be percent %s for string. And you can say something like hello, and then we'll pass in name. So this is the C programming code. And in general, this should work in C++. It doesn't quite work with the notebook environment. However, you know, this is for C++ and most people aren't gonna be reading strings this way. But if you need to know how this works, you can run it on a local C installation or in some kind of C sandbox. So here we are on cplayground.com. That's a little better. Hit run, uh, Caleb. And it says, hello, Caleb. So that's how it would work in C. Now, the problem is that it's a pain in the butt. We have to actually work with an array and it would be much better if we could have a custom data type string to work with strings. And that's exactly what C++ introduces. So for C++, what's gonna happen is we're going to say, include string, and we'll also include IO stream. And what we'll do now is we'll just create a variable of type string. And this will also show a lot of the other benefits of using a string variable instead of an array. So what goes on behind the scenes, we don't really have to worry about too much, but I'm assuming it's gonna be very similar to how strings work in C. We just don't have to worry about all those details. So we'll say name, and for this, we're just gonna assign a value, Caleb. And I just wanna get a little bit of practice working with this. So what we can do first is we can output the length of the string, which is very convenient. So for example, we could say standard C out and we'll say name dot size. So we have methods attached to this string, which makes it very easy to work with these strings and pass around the strings and always have that data available to us. So let's run this and see what we get. 
scrolling down, you can see we get the value five because there's five characters. And we don't even have to worry about that null terminating character or the size of the data structure itself. And in fact, what we could do is we can even append data to this string and that works just fine. So we could say name plus equals space curry, which is a, such an interesting last name. And we'll output name now and we'll see what we get. So running this, we now get Caleb Curry. If we tried to do the same thing with C strings inside of C++, we're not gonna get quite of a nice experience. So in that situation, we would basically just make a character array. And instead of this one being me, I'm just gonna call this one you to represent you. And this is gonna be an array. So we put the square brackets and we can still assign a string literal. So I'll just put your name right here. And what we can do is we can output this, but you'll find that you're not able to append to it. So we'll say you, and let's also just do some output length. So for this, we'll actually need to say stir len. So you notice it's not a method attached to the string, but it's actually a function we pass the string in. So we'll pass you into here, and then we'll just say something like characters long. So definitely not as easy to work with. There we go. So if we run this subscriber, 10 characters long, <laughs> right, we can probably work on the formatting a little bit. We will say is, all right, subscriber is 10 characters long. And now let's try appending to this character array. We can say u plus equals, and we'll just give you a last name like forever. And we run this, we get an error, invalid operands to binary expression. So yeah, you can't do this. So we're trying to append a char of 11 characters and a const char pointer. So this is bad, don't do that. If you wanna append data, then just use C++ strings. So this is a big nope. Now I wanna talk briefly about copying strings. So we can copy C++ strings very easily. So in this example, what we'll do is we'll create a new variable. We'll say standard string, and we'll just call this copy one and we're going to assign this, this original variable we created name, Caleb. And then we'll go ahead and output copy one, like so. That's really sloppy. And taking a look at this, we get the same value Caleb Curry. If we wanted to do something similar with the arrays, it's a little bit more complicated. Basically, if we created an array, we'll just call this copy two, and it'll be 11 characters long to fit all 10 of these characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, plus the null terminating character. And we can try to assign to it. So we could say copy two and assign it the previous variable we had, which is called u. But when we run this, we can error array type char 11 is not assignable. So the fix for this is to actually use a function stir copy and for this you pass in the destination followed by the source and then use of undeclared identifier stir copy it's actually just cpy without the o so there you go and this will actually update the variable so we can say output copy two and now we have subscriber so that is how you would copy using character arrays as opposed to strings, which you can just assign to each other. One last thing is I just wanna talk about getting input for strings. It's really easy when we're working with C++ strings. So we'll say standard C in, and then put the directional arrows pointing the other way. And we'll put this into the original variable we created name. And then I'll do an output. All right, let's type in some cool name like tacos and we get the value tacos. So that is your introduction with working in C++ strings. Hopefully it was helpful. Please be sure to subscribe.